Good morning, Pastor John Davis of the Amityville Community Church. Let's look to our wonderful God in prayer. Father God, we do want to thank you. We want to thank you because you're a great God. We want to thank you because you save souls. We want to thank you that you redeem from iniquity. You change hearts and lives. So as we come to you now, we ask you to show us in your word, your truth, your, your gospel, to show us your hope that our lives may be changed for your glory and our much needed good in Jesus name. Amen. You can see by the title, it's an unusual title. Who am I? Who am I? We realize that we have a name. My name is John, as you could tell John Davis. We may have a job. We may have uh, hobbies, occupations, but the question is, who am I? Who am I really? Who am I in the sight of God? We're going to look at some passages and we're going to try to explore who we are. In Luke chapter 9, verse 54, Luke chapter 9, verse 54 this is what it says. And it says, and when his disciples, James and John, saw this, they said, Lord, do you want us to command fire to come down from heaven and consume them just as Elijah did? But he turned and rebuked them and said, you do not know what manner of spirit you are of. Again, verse 55 but he turned and rebuked them and said, you do not know what manner of spirit you are of. It's interesting statement by Jesus. He rebukes his disciples, but notice how he rebukes them. He doesn't rebuke them for anger. He doesn't rebuke them for their malice. He rebukes them for the ignorance of not knowing who they really are. They don't really know the spirit that dwells within them. They don't know the spirit that motivates them. They don't really know the spirit that, that guides, that directs their life. They don't know the spirit. He says, you do not know what manner of spirit you are of. Jesus as usual, is making one of the most profound statements about human existence. Do we really know who we are? Do we know who we really are? Do we ask ourselves questions? Do we reflect on who we are, on our likes, our dislikes, our preferences? But even more, do we reflect why do I treat one child this way, another child this way? Why do I love one brother more than another? Why do I love going to church? Why do I not love going to church? Why do I go to church and don't really want to go? Do I love Jesus? What in my life demonstrates that I love Jesus? Who am I? Do I really love God? In asking this question, and this is a question that really we should ask regularly. In 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 28. 1 Corinthians eleven twenty-eight, 28, it says, But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of the bread and drink of the cup. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of the bread and drink of the cup. Whenever we take communion, there should be some personal reflection, some self-examination, some real soul searching about who we are at the core of our being. Just a question. Why, when I go to church, am I thinking about getting out of church? 
Am I a person that I wake up eagerly to fellowship with brethren? Do I love watching the game more than reading the Bible? Do I think when I've read the Bible, I've done something? Or do I read the Bible with a sense of man? There's just nothing better to do. This is just a good thing. My prayer life. Do I just love sitting and talking to the beautiful Jesus? When Jesus asked, can't you watch with me one hour? Do we find that just sitting in prayer or we just going through the prayers to get to something else? Who am I, Lord? Help me to know. Now, these questions, sometimes we don't even really ask ourselves questions. We have got into the rut of going through religious motions. We've got into the habit or routine. Sometimes we go just to be seen at church. Sometimes we read just to soothe our own conscience. I read, I read. But when we read the scriptures, we realize there's a love and enjoyment in this. In John chapter 16, verse 13. In John chapter 16, verse 13. It says the following. However, when he, the spirit of truth has come. He will guide you into all truth. For he will not speak on his own authority. But whatever he hears, he will speak. And he will tell you things to come. What a beautiful passage. However, when he, the spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth, for he will not speak on his own authority. But whatever he hears, he will speak, and he will tell you things to come. The spirit of truth will convict us. It will change us. It will guide us. It will reveal to us it will speak to us there are some of us who understand how distant our heart is from God and not as some of us we we ask Lord help me give me a new heart I want to love you more I love reading your word but yet I know I love this other activity more Lord, why do I love my family more than you? Lord, help me. Lord, help me to walk in the spirit of truth. Help me to know who I am. One of the great ways to really understand who we are is to simply look at some very visible material criteria. We don't like scales because scales often tell the truth. The blood pressure machine, we don't go because we know what it's going to say already. The machine to take our sugar in the morning, there's a number. We don't even bother anymore. So there are devices, there are gadgets, as it were, in this world that measure things about our physical being. And some of us, we avoid them. If we think we're losing weight, we're more eager to get on the scale. If we've been watching our food intake, we go to the doctor with a sense of optimism. And yet spiritually, aren't there measurements as well? All we have to do, look at our time. Many of us don't want to keep a schedule. And sometimes it's because we're disjointed, disorganized. But sometimes we really don't want to know what we're doing. We don't want to know what we're doing because it shows who we are. We don't want to know. We, we don't want to see that our Bible reading really is just 15 or 20 minutes a day. There may be one or two days where we've read a lot. But we realize that Our lives are taken up with so many other things and really not things that require time. We 
convince ourselves of who we are. But as Jesus says, we don't really know what manner of spirit we are of. A great story is told by a preacher and his five-year-old daughter. And you could tell by the fact that the daughter asks this question, that the daughter speaks this way. Children are often a reflection of who we are, especially at the younger ages. We realize that as children get older, they develop their own habits, ideas, their own identities in some way. But younger children, they love what we love. If we don't look forward to certain godly activities, neither will our children. Sometimes our children, hey, aren't we going to have Bible reading tonight? If our children don't ask that question, it's probably because we don't have Bible reading in the house. Do the children ever ask, hey, mom, are we going to prayer meeting? Hey, dad, are we going to sit down and have our family devotions as we always do? If our children are usually asking about going out to eat, if our children are asking these other questions, then it shows who we are as parents. The same with wives and husbands, no different for adults. But this preacher tells the story of his five-year-old daughter, and she comes to him. And it's one of those stories that you realize in the home, there's a dialogue about Jesus. There's a profound impact of the Savior in this household. And this is what the child asks. Daddy, how come I love playing with my dollhouse more than I love reading the Bible? Well, the question is such a great question. It's a profound question of who we are. And this is a five-year-old person, five-year-old girl. But she's understanding that there's a love. See, many of us, we say we love Jesus, but we, we, we're not honest with ourselves. And so she asked that question because no doubt she's heard her father talk about love of God, enjoying God, just 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 being enthusiastic about being in the presence of the Savior. And this is what it says. This is what he says. He says, well, my sweetie, as he calls her, my honey, he says, that's a great question. And he says, it shows that you already have some love of God in you because you understand that you do love something more than God and you realize that in your heart that there are things that try to move out the love of God I fear that as adults we don't even believe that anymore we don't struggle with it we say we love God but we don't want to admit that there is deep competition in our hearts, deep competition. Some of us, all we have to do, look how long we hold the phone in our hand. And we might even look at some religious activity. But we don't want to admit that our love of God is waning. It is growing cold. Isn't it what Jesus said to the church of Ephesus in Revelation 2? You've left your first love. They were doing so many things. That's a, a message in and of itself. But you could read it in Ephesians, I mean in Revelation chapter 2. It's the letter to the church of Ephesus. They were involved in so many activities. They had good doctrine. But the love of Jesus, the love of the Savior, the love of his word, it was no longer there. You've left your first love. That communion supper is supposed to be a time of examination. What are we thinking about? I know in, in my church, I know that there's silence, but sometimes you'll even see people whispering on occasion. 
And when there's silence, are we examining ourself? Maybe there is some repentance. Maybe there is some real sense of, Lord, help me. I need to grow. I need to, I need to love you. It's intriguing that in Galatians chapter 6, verse 3, the Apostle Paul writes this statement, an interesting statement. For if anyone thinks himself to be something, when he is nothing, he deceives himself. For if anyone thinks himself to be something, when he is nothing, he deceives himself. We realize how do I get to the place? How does a human being arrive at the place where they believe there's something when they're actually nothing? Because that is the language he uses. The, the worldly, the cultural is they're a legend in their own mind. I remember in a movie, it was mentioned in the Star Wars movie, delusions of grandeur. We need the Holy Spirit to teach us who we are, to remind us. In the book of Psalms 141, David, David has an idea of how to be guided to know who he is, guided to know who he is. And he says it with such a, such an openness, such a transparency. David was a man after God's own heart. One of the reasons why he was a man after God's own heart is because not only of his love for God, but his awareness. All you have to do is read Psalm 51 and you see the deep confession of his sin, how, it's, how it goes to the core of who he is. It's not just, Lord, forgive me, but there's this deep sense of repentance and grief and sorrow about his his wickedness, his act of, of transgression. And I want you to look at Psalm 141, and it says this, verse 5, Let the righteous strike me, it shall be a kindness. And let him rebuke me, it shall be as excellent oil. Let not my head refuse it, for still my prayer is against the deeds of the wicked. If that, that first part of the verse, let the righteous strike me, it's a strike. When we hear something that cuts our soul, when we hear something that cuts our character, it's a strike. But he says, it shall be a kindness. We may resist hearing truth, our first reaction is to rise up, to become defensive. Even in our mind, if we're listening, we're not listening. We're justifying ourselves. We're rationalizing ourselves. We're defending our actions, even if mentally, to give the appearance of I listening to you. But David says it's a kindness. One of the kindest things a friend can do for us is to tell us who we really are. Oh, it's a kind act to say, Listen, my brother, and to explain to us our fault, our shortcoming, our sin. And then he says, let him rebuke me. It shall be as excellent oil. David sees a healing in this, a real healing that comes from the voice of a person. One of the great ways that the Spirit does guide us is through people. Many of us, we think God is leading us, but God isn't. Sadly, sometimes God, our own voice has become the voice of God and we don't even know it anymore. We think we're something when we're nothing. That is why it's difficult for us to talk to other people about our life, about our shortcomings in the gospel, about needing to grow, admitting our true wickedness. It's difficult for some of us. But Jesus, he gives grace. 
The gospel of redemption is the gospel of a changed heart. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. All things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. God can and will change our heart. He says, seek me with all your heart and I will answer you. Seek my face. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Let's ask God in earnest prayer, in fervent prayer, Lord Jesus, teach me your ways. Lord Jesus, show me who I am. The psalmist asked that question not long before Psalm 141. All you have to do is just look back. Psalm 139, verse 23. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my anxieties and see if there is any wicked way in me and lead me into the way everlasting. You know, we could pray that prayer. In some ways, you might even say that's the prayer of salvation. Lead me in the way everlasting. It's going to lead us to Jesus. It's going to lead us to the book of Jesus. May God grant us the grace to understand who we are. Let's use our checkbook. Let's see who we are. Look at where the money is spent. Do we ever just... For the kingdom of God, give $2,000, $3,000. We've spent that on vacation, haven't we all? We've gone on a cruise. We've gone to Disney with our family. Our cable bill for some of us is $200 a month. How much do we generously give to the kingdom? Let's use our checkbook. Let's use our Let's use our our schedules, our clocks. What, what, what consumes my time? Let's keep a journal. Lord, show me who I am. Let me not hide from who I am anymore. Lord, I don't want to be self-deceived. I want to examine myself and know who I am. Flood me with your grace. Grant me the wisdom to know who I am. How do I feel? What's my heart? What's my joy level about going to church? What's my joy level about fellowshipping with saints? How does my wife think I reflect the gospel? Would my wife say I really love God if they were honest? Are they even scared to be honest? Is the husband, can the husband say things or does the wife dismiss him? Is the husband scared to say things because it just brings about problems? Yes. May God search us all. May God know our hearts. May the Lord try us and know our anxieties because he wants to lead us into the way everlasting. That's what Jesus does. He leads us into the way everlasting. May God bless this May it begin a journey of repentance. May it begin a journey of revival, a journey of renewal, a journey of soul searching that leads us to a different joy in Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen.